I'm Mike. And I'm Matt. And this is The Coin Show. On this episode of The Coin Show, Matt talks about the best holiday gifts for a coin collector. I'm going to recommend Morgan Dollar, America's Love Affair with a Legendary Coin. We'll answer a listener question, and we'll talk about the coolest thing to walk into Matt's shop this week. But first, as (laughs) always, the news. The news. The news is brought to you by the American Numismatic Association. Sharpen your numismatic skills by taking the ANA School of Numismatics educational two-day seminars held prior to the 60th Annual Fund Convention in Orlando, Florida. Fundamentals of Grading U.S. Coins and Introduction to Counterfeit Detection of U.S. Coins will be held on Tuesday and Wednesday, January 6th and 7th. Tuition for the seminars is $248 for ANA and Fund members and $348 dollars for non-members for more information and to register online go to money.org matt the united states mint has finally and i say mercifully limited the mintage on the 50th anniversary kennedy gold half dollar to 75,000 coins that's about right yes Sales opened on August 5th, 2014, during the ANA. To oh, much that was fanfare. a mess. Yes, it was, to much fanfare. But they have been less than enthusiastic at just under 68,000 coins. It seems like like the overwhelming majority of these coins sold the first week. Mm-hmm. Now, generally, when a limit is announced, sales pick up some. Either way, people who uh, have them will be happy that in short order they will be no longer available and people like me that lost money on them yeah well what do you do yeah but you're one of the holders and that's the game i play when they finally when they finally stop making them maybe you'll get a nice little bump oh no i'm already out i'm out okay (laughs) well you know it's like i said that's the game i play they're not all winners uh you know i lost my i I didn't lose that much no uh, i'm quite certain 100 bucks a coin you know and, well, we won't ask how many. We don't want to rub it in. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Now, you know, it's it's it makes a perfect segue because also of interest from the United States Mint is what I like to refer to as a happy surprise for those who took advantage of a different offer. If you remember last episode, I talked about the 2014 American $1 coin and currency set, mm-hmm. which you met with a yawn. Yeah. Have you heard about this set? Heard any uh, news about it? Uh, I, I did read somewhere that they put a, they snuck it enhanced and circulated into it. Yes, the set which sells for thirteen ninety five contains an enhanced, uncirculated Native American dollar coin. Ooh. Uh, and <laughs> you know what? Here's the thing: is well, first, it's it's the first enhanced, uncirculated finished coin to come from Denver. Mm-hmm. So now you have one from uh, you have one from West Point. Uh, let's see, the Kennedy half was minted in I Philadelphia was, or San uh, Francisco? No, I think it might have been West Point. That's where they've been doing a lot of the gold. Okay. And this one was this one has been minted at Denver. You know, it, the mintage on this set was limited to 50000 And for the people that jumped on it and bought them at 1395 they are now flipping these on eBay. And you remember what I said about the next set where people are like, eh, yeah, whatever. Yeah. Here it is. Here's your next set. And now they're turning them for two and three times what they paid for. 
I, it still meets me with a yawn. So, oh, it's okay. It, we, <laughs> you, you are are clearly unenthused because of the subject matter of the coin. I it has like... nothing to do with the subject matter. It has to do with the fact that it's a modern coin. We've had this discussion. Well, no, that's times. what I'm saying, though, is that you're clearly unenthused because it's a modern coin and it's it's you know something that's new. I have, in the past, described not only a love of modern coins, but you know that I have a special place in my heart for the Native American dollars. And I think that it is going to be a series for the future, mostly because of the difficulty in obtaining pristine specimens yep. and the difficulty in uh, keeping them pristine because the coin tones so easily. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, I understand that, that you, you like them and, that, and that's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> I know you're happy for me. That's, I am happy for you. You yes. enjoy them. That's what yes. it's all about. But, well, you know, people started scrambling as soon as, as soon as the news got out that there was an enhanced uncirculated coin. You know, it was something that was completely unexpected, and were it not for that in this set, I think that the sales would still be somewhere around twelve or thirteen thousand. Oh yeah. You know, I mean this this would have been a complete yawner, but you know, here's why you pay attention. Here's why you keep looking at the Mint website, and I, I mean, I'm not even looking at it in terms of a flip opportunity. I think that this this is the kind of stuff that's really great, because one, you have the enhanced and circulated has a mintage of 50,000 coins, period, which is a relatively low mintage. And, um, you know, there was the people that wanted them got something really special. Now, the flippers that came in afterwards, they're going to get money. And, you know, that kind of that kind of it. It, uh, it I don't know. It, <laughs> it doesn't make anybody else happy about it. But I think that the initial, you know, Good news is the fact that the people that wanted them got something really special. Yeah. yeah. There's always a bright side. Yes. And <laughs> even with modern coins, there is a bright side. There is a bright side. Yes. Now, uh, I spoke to somebody in Mint customer service yesterday. Uh-huh. And they told me that they did not know if or when they would be available again. Uh, I think in my you know little bit deeper research on it, I think they've sold all 50,000. Really? Yeah. I think they did. As soon as they found out there was an enhanced uncirculated and there were no household limits, people started buying these by the hundreds. Oh, I bet. I bet the TV guys bought them all up. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you what. There's a lot of people on eBay that have them and have them for sale. And they're selling them, like I said, for roughly twice what they paid for. Hmm. So stay tuned for more details on this developing story. Currency in New Zealand is about to get a major facelift. Really? Yes. This is is also really interesting. The Reserve Bank of New Zealand is implementing an initiative. You say that five times. That (laughs) that they're calling brighter money. The upgrade of the nation's currency will replace the current notes with new ones of the same size and basic design and themes, but with vibrant colors and more security features, of course. Hmm. Coinnews.net is featuring the pictures of the new designs, which may be the most brightly colored currency on the planet. You taking a look at the picture of this? I am. I'm seeing them. Denominations from $5 to $100 will all be replaced over the next two years, with the older notes retaining legal tender status, at least for now. The new notes have been manufactured in partnership with the Canadian Banknote Company, who has produced New Zealand's passports since 2009. It looks like they're polymer. They may very well be polymer. All I know is that these are vivid colors. Yeah, they're cool. You know, they're blue and purple and green, and the 100 is red. And, you know, they have, they have lots of security features in them. You have, you have the queen on the 20. <laughs> you know. <laughs> I say, you know, it's, they're, uh, but they're, they're cool looking notes. And, uh, you know, so they keep the exact same uh, themes, you know, so on the five, you still have Sir Edmund Hillary. I think that's a pretty cool looking note. Actually. That is. And, and, uh, penguin and I didn't realize he was from New Zealand. Uh, yeah, I, I, I think I knew that. He was the first guy to get to the South Pole, wasn't he? I believe so. Yes. 
And uh, yes, they uh, will see. Actually, the story here in uh, in CoinNews.net says that they w- will also still be produced from flexible plastic. So that means that the old notes were polymer too. Yeah, yeah, that's what I was thinking. Yeah. So I mean, this is uh, this is I think the future of money. And I just like the fact that I mean, there is no mistaking denominations. Yeah. Yeah. yeah you well, got a purple means- bill. It's fifty. I'm wondering when we're going to go to these polymer notes. Um, they, I mean, they I, hold up. They hold up forever. Yeah. Okay. That's the thing. So. Put that. Put that down right after we discontinue the one dollar bill. I do that. And I after did. we discontinue the cent. I understand. So figure about forty or fifty years. Just saying. <laughs> the Mount Rushmore America the Beautiful Quarter has been named best circulating coin by Cross Publications. I cool. don't hate it. <laughs> well, you know, uh, CoinWeek.com is reporting that by winning this category, the Mount Rushmore Quarter is now in competition for Coin of the Year. And I'm glad that it's receiving the recognition. I think of all the American America the Beautiful Quarters, this might be one of the better designs. Yeah, I think uh, so. I, I like the fact that they show, you know, the workers constructing Mount Rushmore, um, that, that it's from an, a, a, a not often seen angle. And then it really kind of brings Mount Rushmore, well, I don't want to say to life, but you know what I mean? It makes it more realistic. Yeah, sure. Um, you know, I, 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 like I said, I'm really glad that, that this quarter is receiving recognition because I think that, that they got, you know, one out of 50 ain't bad. They got this one right. <laughs> but unfortunately, you know, in the coin of the week or coin of the year category, it's going up against the enhanced uncirculated silver American Eagle. Which, in my my personal opinion, is coin of the century. Oh well, that's that's a lot. We'll that see. is a lot, but we'll see. but I think that that they actually perfected the design when they did the enhanced uncirculated because you finally do see the flag. Yeah, yeah, that's true. And and that to me is is the beauty of the design. So, but we'll have to wait and see which one wins. Uh, you know, they've. They've been judged by, or they're they're going to be judged by an international panel of judges. Uh, there were a total of ninety four different nominees from forty five countries for the entire competition, and the United States has at least two. Huh. Yeah. Hmm. So. Well, can't go wrong. No, at least two. Two two out of seventy three is not bad. Two out of seventy three stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I still think they've got the winner in the. In the uh, we'll see. see. We'll what see. You, you know, what are you gonna what are you gonna put up against it? One of these one of these enameled coins from the Royal Canadian Mint. Who knows? They might they might go after that weird. Uh, remember that weird Native American thing they had from the Canadian Mint in gold that looked like a deformed Daffy Duck. And finally, in the news, Numismatic News is reporting that the all time finest eighteen thirty six to thirty eight Gobrek dollar pattern set will be exhibited for the first time anywhere in public at the 2015 Florida United Numismatics Convention in January at the Fun Show. Now you're talking my my yeah. speed. Mm-hmm. 36 coins all this or uh no, 10 coins all the same design. Yeah, that's your speed. Well, it's just a you know, there's the gold break dollars. I have one of these in my safe right now. Mhm. So they didn't make an enhanced uncirculated out of that. They sure didn't. PCGS will display the 10 coin set at their booth at the fun show, courtesy of their owner, Bob R. Simpson of Texas. The set it has a weighted grade point average of 55.683. So that's that's high AU. Yep. And is ranked as the number one finest all-time set in the PCGS registry. Hmm. Other high-grade Gobrek dollars from Simpson's collection will also be displayed. He owns all of the 11 coins in the pattern set except for one, the unique Judd 61. Mm. Yep. Now, do you know which pattern that is? Uh, I believe it has to do with the composition. Um, okay. I could be wrong. Because they just they just offer it by number and without having a pattern book. I was just wondering how our listeners would... I mean, do they all... Do most of the patterns? Well, all of the patterns look basically the same, don't they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it's the 
it's the Seat of Liberty design with a kind of a Flying Eagle style reverse. Which they would actually reuse for the Flying Eagle scent. Yeah. But it has stars on the back. Mm-hmm. So while some have stars, some don't have stars. Some have the orientation a little bit different of the bird. And do you know how many patterns they make? And I don't mean how many. I'm talking about, did they make a lot of these patterns? I, I think they did make quite a few different um, different go-break patterns. Well, I mean, he's got ten different ones at least. Right, and he's not the only one that has a collection. Yeah, of and they, I mean, they and they did make them for three different years. They did thirty six, thirty eight, and thirty nine. Um, okay, so you know, I think over those three years, there are there are definitely several several different either orientations or metal compositions. Um, okay, well, the Gobrick dollar features the first appearance of the Seated Liberty design. And that particular design would grace all silver denominations of U.S. coinage for decades after its launch. So that is the beginning of an era in U.S. coinage. You can find these and other news stories from the coin world on our website at coinshowradio.com. Just click on News on the top bar for our RSS news feed. Matt, yes, sir. You know, Christmas is just around the corner, mm-hmm. and holiday time. Either way, um, I, I understand that you have thought about a holiday buying guide. Yeah, you know, I mean, not a, I'm sure not everybody that listens to our show is an advanced collector, or I know some people that listen to our show actually listen to it in the car with their families, um, just from talking to different. Um, or their band, or their bandmates. Yeah, talking talking to different people that happen to come into the store that listen to the show. So I figured I would kind of try to put together uh, a list of you know uh, a holiday buying guide. Let's call it because, as you know, uh, the holiday season is just crashing crashing towards us at full speed right now. Um, so I kind of wanted to run through some of the things that maybe you hadn't thought of. Uh, as a gift for your favorite coin collector. Um, the first thing, and probably one of the things that we harp on the most on this show is books. One of my yep. favorite things, obviously. Yep. They're an excellent gift because most collectors really obviously enjoy learning about the things that they collect. Uh, there are also very affordable options. Uh, you know, most books by Krauss or Whitman are staples of the hobby uh, and will be very beneficial to the collector of a certain series. Uh, the Whitman Red Book series, which we talk about quite often, um, is is a really well written series uh, done by some of the top top brains in the hobby. Uh, you know, you and you can get these anywhere. You can get them at Amazon uh, websites like Wizard Coin Supply has a lot of books, uh, and actually even places like Half Price Books, you can sometimes come up with them. Um, yeah, as a matter of fact, because of the the niche that is coin collecting you know they don't enjoy the mainstream appeal that a lot of other books Mm -hmm. do and sometimes that works to our advantage in the fact that you know people will have them in overstock and really just want to get rid of them um you know one of the things that you note in your notes that that i don't think you said is that in comparison to the coins themselves the books are a bargain yeah and, you know, what I've always said about it and I think is most important is that owning the book will definitely make you a better collector, will make you a more knowledgeable collector, and will probably make you a richer Yeah, because it will save you a lot of money. Uh, you know, if you yes. take the time to read it and learn what the book has to teach you, uh, a lot of the times it can, co- it can stop you from making a costly mistake. So yes. great gifts for the coin people. You know, if you really want to overachieve – uh, you can go out and look for some of the rarer and out of title books, uh, out of print books uh, that can be found that can be very useful for for collectors of uh, certain series as well. Uh, Penny Whimsy is a good one. Uh, the Overton Guide for Cat Bus Half Dollars. Uh, the Bolander book for Bust Hours. Uh, you know, these are all books that I don't think have been printed recently, but can be very useful. That. Uh... 
Bolander book is probably the closest I will ever get to a bus dollar. <laughs> it's a cool one. Uh, I actually have a couple copies of it that I use even to this day, just because there are so many counterfeit bus dollars that uh, that book's actually really useful in identifying the the genuine die pairs. So the next thing that that I noted was a loop. I mean, obviously, this is the thing that I actually wear run around my neck every day at the office. Even when you're not in the office. Well, yeah. I mean, sometimes I find myself still wearing it when I get home. So, you know, obviously this is the tool of the trade. You know, you want to have one because it's the standard numismatic tool. I mean, you simply almost can't buy coins without just uh, at least older coins. I guess the newer coins you could. But they're, they're very handy. They come in use. They're great gifts. And they're really not that expensive. Uh, you know, you could get one for five to 40 bucks, uh, depending on, you know, how, uh, good of a glass you want to go with. And, and one thing that I would like to make note of in regards to loops is that it behooves you to buy a 10 times loop, regardless of, of any other magnification that you want to have with it. You know, I mean, they, they make some that have a 10 on one side and a 15 or, you know, a combination that you put a 10 and a five together. But 10 is the magnification that the grading services use to actually grade coins. So it really behooves you to have the standard unit of measurement. Yeah. And anything beyond that that you want to add is, you know, that's well, yeah, anything table. over 10, honestly, is kind of overkill. Um, I know some coin graders that work for the grading companies that, uh, that would not surprise me if they use their loop five times a day. Uh, a lot of times they don't even they don't even loop coins unless they see something. Um, so, but that you know that takes years and years and years of experience to be able to do. Um, so you know, like I said, anywhere from around five to around forty bucks, you can get a decent loop. Um, and especially you know if you have a, a newer collector that you know, uh, you know that's going to be something that they use often so it's definitely a good gift um now if you wanted to start getting into the the numismatic side of it uh and a little more pricey uh we noted that uh an ngc certified shipwreck coin might be a good holiday gift um there were two shipwrecks that come to my mind at least um that you can get coins from NGC certified that aren't that expensive. That would be the El Cazador uh, and the SS Republic. Uh, both of these shipwrecks have uh, extremely rich history, and the coins that came up from them, at least in the silver, uh, are reasonably affordable and actually pretty collectible as well. Um, the El Cazador had a large hoard of the, uh, the Mexican 8 Real coins, and the Central America was a ship that was sunk in 1865. Um, and there was a large quantity of Seated Liberty half dollars. So both of these particular examples are relatively inexpensive. Um, you know, anywhere from like 80 to four or 500 bucks, depending on the, the condition that you go after. It's a lot easier and less expensive than going out and trying to find some of the gold coins, which there were some gold coins on the SS Republic as well. So uh, a lot of people know about the gold, but they don't know about the silver. Um, so, you know, that might be another example of something you could get, get uh, as a good coin gift. And even books on the shipwreck. Yeah, see? Also fascinating stuff. I remember talking to Q. David Bowers at the World's Fair of Money, not this last year, but the year before, and talking about the Harrison Marchand books. Oh, yeah, yeah. That were pulled up from the SS Central yeah, America. They brought one, didn't they? Fascinating. Yes, they did. Fascinating stories, though. Yeah. Yep. Now here, this next one is probably my favorite. Um, it, it, it and it's really simple and it's inexpensive. If you know that person uh, in your life that is a coin collector, buy them a membership to the American Numismatic Association. This is the biggest uh, numismatic association in the country. Uh, there are a ton of benefits. You can submit coins to NGC. You can. Uh, you get an awesome magazine, uh, which you can the new yes, You can either get that in print or you can get it online. Uh, and you also have uh, access to the Dwight M. Manley Numismatic Library, uh, which uh, is another awesome, awesome perk. Uh, so, plus you get to be a member of a very, very cool club. Yeah. Oh yeah. You know the ANA is a great organization. You know I, we can't 
we can't speak well enough about them, you know, the support that they've given us and our, our endeavors over the years. But, but even to go to, you know, the World's Fair of Money and go and see all the stuff that they put out, because of them, I've been able to look up close and personal at 1913 uh, Liberty Nichols, yep. 1804 Dollars, the 1849 Double Eagle. Yep. I, 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 one of my one of the best stories that uh, I always like telling at the shop is when you and I were standing there in Chicago next to the 1913 V nickel and the 1804 dollar, and the gentleman comes up and's looking at it real close and almost dumps the case over <laughs> yes. that was holding like I mean what what was there several million dollars worth of coins. Yes, he just almost dumped it over, and the and the curator kind of looked at us because we were standing there talking to him, and he said he said. Hmm. I'm surprised an alarm's not going off. <laughs> oh man, that was one of my favorite stories. But you get to get up yeah. close and personal with this stuff, and that's that's really yeah. cool. Yeah. Um, back back on track here. I'm sorry, I, I digress. Uh, another great gift, uh, and it's really simple actually, is bullion. Um, there are many different options out there to buy bullion. Uh, there are many really cool designs that go on strictly bullion coins. Um, and right now, at least in, in this particular year, the price is pretty low compared to what it has been for the last several years. So if there was a coin that, you know, maybe came out two or three years ago that you didn't get because the price was so high, well, you might, you might take a look at it again and see if you're able to pick one up. Um, so, you know, that's another, um, another option. Um, one also that I like that, uh, this is for the little more advanced collector, um, is a gift certificate for PCGS CoinFAX. Uh, are you familiar with CoinFAX, Mike? I am. Okay. Uh, I am. It is a great website. I use it, I wouldn't say every day, but there are some days I do use it several times a day just for 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 the purpose of what I uh, a lot of price checking. Uh, you know, it, it compiles auction records, uh, recent auction records uh, of certain coins that uh, that it's handy to have in one spot. Uh, they also have some information about mintages and varieties, which uh, – As well as population uh, data. Population data as well, yep. So if, if you know, you're know you a little bit more advanced collector, you're starting to kind of collect the certified stuff, or you know, you're, you know that the collector uh, that you might be buying for is kind of drifting that way, you might look at uh, PCGS CoinFAX. It's really a great reference. I mean books are really good, but you know this kind of t- takes that, that internet age step – forwards because there's a lot of pictures there's a lot of real-time information so and the real-time information brings a book to life it actually makes it a living breathing thing that changes over time is constantly updated and so you know that the information that you're getting is truly state-of-the-art yep that's exactly right uh another one uh would be a gift certificate to a website such as wizard coin supply uh again uh you know this allows you to shop uh, for all of these things that we've kind of been talking about, um, you know, kind of more relating to the books and stuff, but also for supplies, uh, you know, they can go out and buy their own loop if they want, you know, so it, I don't, I, I'm not on big on giving gift certificates, but you know, if worse comes to worse, I'm sure that the, that the, uh, coin collector in your life would find that useful. It, yeah. Cause they sell all sorts of, they sell all sorts of cool things like storage, uh, mm-hmm storage items you know if if somebody has a lot of currency and they want sleeves for them if they want two by twos if they'd like to buy a nice loop or if they'd like to buy uh something for you know not i i don't want to say self-slabbing but you know what i mean something to protect some nicer coins storage is the right word yeah yeah um and then last but not least and this one hits closest to home for me something from the local coin shop Shameless plug. Shameless plug. Um, yes. Well, if you happen to know where your favorite coin collector shops, you might just stop in there someday and say, hey, you know, I'm looking for a gift for so-and-so. They come in here pretty often. This is what they like. Half the time, the dealer may already know what they like. Uh, half the time, the dealer might have the perfect coin in mind for them. I know we do. Uh, we get several customers a year that are family members of some of our better customers come in uh and we we, sometimes we have stuff kind of already set aside that we think they would like um so you know some shops offer gift certificates some shops offer 
you know, uh, they they may do like what we do, was we just kind of keep in mind what they're after, um, and we set some things aside. So, you know, that might be uh, another option for you as well. So, you know, I, I want to say that, that quite often, you know, one of the things that coin collectors like to do when they go into a coin shop is they like to talk, they like to learn, and so they discuss a lot of the things that they're interested. And if, you know, a coin if a the operator of the shop is on his toes, which we know is the case at Lost Dutchman Rare Coins, <laughs> um, you know you're gonna have he's gonna you're gonna have an idea of what a lot of the people that have stopped in are interested in and what they're eyeing, and so yes, it really does kind of give you a heads up as to hey, I can surprise you know this collector in my life with something that they've had their eye on. Without them ever knowing what's going on, mm-hmm. that's the best part too. I love surprising people. So, and my, one of my favorite is, things uh, is after the holidays when these customers come in and and you know they they know. I mean, they obviously know that their family member came in to see us, but it's fun to kind of chat with them and see how how well they like the gift and so on and so forth. I've actually, um, funny enough, we had a customer. Uh, this wasn't for the holidays here; it was for a birthday, but. We had a customer that had been kind of eyeballing uh, a piece for a while, and his daughter came in, and we sold it to her because we knew that he wanted it, and he kept coming in and asking us about it, and we kept saying, oh, I, I, I misplaced it. I don't know where it went. You know, I, I'm going to dig around, but I'm not sure I'm going to be able to find it, so on and so forth, until the day came, uh, and he actually called us that day and told us what sly dogs we were. So, you know, stuff like that, it, it's always fun. It's fun for us. Absolutely. I guess with any gift, though, you really just want to make it personal. Uh, you know, try to take care of, try to find out what they're interested in, and and do your best. These are just some suggestions. There's obviously many more out there, but, you know, they're, they're kind of just a few things that we threw together, hoping that we can make your holiday shopping a little easier. Yeah, some new wow. bumps. Fresh that's a, stuff. That's a rocking new bump. I love it. I'm telling you, it's fresh stuff from the Coffin Cats. Wow. You know, we decided uh, whenever we can to answer listener questions. And this week, um, I, I have one that I'm, I'm actually really anxious to answer. Okay, rock on. We got an email to questions at coinshowradio.com. Okay. So you can you can send us your questions at questions at coinshowradio dot com. You can go to our web page. There is a there's a link on the website where you can just click on it and you can send us a question. We'll be happy to answer it on a future show. This one comes from Eric Wines. Uh, Eric writes to us, Matt and Mike. I like your new web page. Thanks. However, oh, <laughs> can you tell me how to download your podcasts? Well, you know, Eric, I couldn't be happier to tell you how to download our podcast. Um, you go to coinshowradio.com, and along the top bar, you're going to find a, a, a link that says Listen to the Coin Show. I'm and doing you, this as, as you're, you're And you click on, on it. Listen. And it brings up a beautiful picture of you and me at the World's Fair a couple of years ago talking to our good buddy Q. David Bowers. And uh, underneath that, it has links to the individual episodes, and you will find a link to every single episode we've ever recorded, even the ones with that third guy. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, all you do is you find the episode, because they all have a description, and you find the episode you want to listen to, and you click on the link that says Read More, and when you read more, it will take you to... Uh, it'll take you to a page that has a player on it where you can just click on it and listen if you like. Or uh, there's a link at the bottom of it of every single one of them that says check out this episode. And if you check out this episode, uh, it will send you to a Libsyn page where uh, where you can, you can uh, listen to it there. You can save it. Yeah. Yeah, you can save it from there. 
Yeah. It's like, you know, we've been, when we did the new web page, we've tried as much as we can to incorporate all the great features, you know, that we've had from all the different stuff. And I mean, trust me, it's like there's so much stuff when you get into 70, 80, 90 episodes that, you know, you might find an episode or two, like we had a comment from somebody on our Facebook page that, you know, they were having a problem with this, this one or that one. And, you know, we try as hard as we can to make all of them available. Honestly, one of the easiest ways to download all of our episodes? iTunes. iTunes. Subscribe on iTunes. Subscribe on iTunes. As soon as we release it, it automatically downloads it to your computer. Yes. And um, I can tell you that we have a couple of hundred people that subscribe every single uh, episode on cool. iTunes. That's so, awesome. Yeah. So, Eric, we, we really appreciate you uh, yes, yeah, asking the question. And we're more than happy to answer it for you. And hopefully we can help other people out who are having the same issue. <laughs> yes. Um, we also got an email from Jeff Mendenhall. Okay. It says, hey guys, love the podcast and thanks for all the information you give out. I have a complete Walking Liberty half dollar set, all PCGS, all but three are CAC. Cool. I rank number two on the PCGS complete variety set. Circulation Strikes, and number 14 on the Circulation Strikes set. Wow. Yeah, so he has That's a heck he has of a, a set. That is a heck of a set. So he says uh, he's only been collecting coins for about three years now, and this is as far as he's gotten. He doesn't have any kids to lead the set to, and he's in his mid-30s. His wife is more interested in a down payment on a new house than he is trying to achieve an all-65 or higher set. Well, uh. Yeah. I, I think she might have a point. Priorities, you know. Yeah, you know. But uh, he says PCGS's price list can't really be worth what they say it is, can it? No. Okay. So how much do you really think he could get out of it? Well, that's the best part about what we were talking about in my segment earlier, which was PCGS coin facts. Um, they, they're... The, their price guide is interesting. Uh, I'm not gonna bang. I'm not gonna bang on it too much. It, it just like any other price guide, it, it has a little uh, inflation value to it. Let's say uh, they think they're optimistic. There you go. They're optimistic. That's a good way to put it. Yes. Um, but underneath all those listings, they do show you what stuff is actually sold for at auction, uh, which is a much much more realistic price. Um, just simply because. You know, as we all know, something's only worth what somebody's willing to pay you for it. That's correct. And this just shows you what somebody was willing to pay for it in the in the recent past. So yes. it can give you a much better idea. Um, you can also use just the auction websites themselves, Heritage. Uh, go to ha.com and search through their auction archives. Uh, you know, you can find stuff that sold recently. Um, find a comparable coin and look what it sold for. And, and that should give you a much better idea. Uh, of what it's worth rather than, you know, like the PCGS price guide. Okay. He also asks, where should I sell it to get the most money? I.e. eBay, a dealer, Heritage, and, and, you know, just let me interject this. Understand that anytime you sell a coin, okay, particularly um, if you're going to sell it to a dealer, you know, the dealer has to make a living. Yeah. And so the dealer is going to have to turn around and sell the coin. So, Although it is a very liquid way of selling them and will probably give you the fastest return on it, mm -hmm. will probably not get you the highest price, but honestly, will get you a fair price more often than not. Well, like I, I was just sitting here thinking about the answer to that, and I guess it does all depend on time frame. If you have a couple months to wait, your best bet is to send them through the auction, send them to Heritage, send them to Stacks. Uh, and let them do all the marketing and hopefully sell the coins for you at a good price. Uh, you know, if you need it sooner than that, then you may, you may, you know, put a list together and kind of send it around to, to some dealers. Um, because those kind of coins, honestly, uh, if they're CAC certified PCGS, uh, a lot of times you can get quotes on them without even having to show them to the dealers. Uh, you know, they're going to assume that they're nice coins, uh, because they've been through two companies that really kind of give them that assertion. Um, that is going to be the closest thing to a sight unseen coin. Yes, that exactly. You get. Yep, exactly. Yes. So you know, that's how, I mean, they're coins I would like to buy, honestly. But but it all depends on your time frame. Like I said, if you have time to wait, send them through the auction. 
that's where you're going to get the most money. And he, lastly, he asks, what time of year is the best to sell? <sighs> that's a good question. Um, I, I know in my business, um, we typically tend to slow down during the summer months. Um, so, you know, just, just kind of like the stock market, they, you know, people are on vacation. Um, so I would think like the fun show in January, uh, is a good place. Uh, I know I've got a couple pieces in this coming auction. Um, yeah, I mean, that would probably be a best bet, but any, any time that's not smack dab in the middle of the summer, I think it would be better. Yes. Absolutely. And, and always remember that, uh, you know, sometimes the bigger the audience, as far as auctions go, the better the prices. So you might consider selling it at a major auction, like, you know, the, the world's fair of money. They generally have now they've had two auction houses that run the A and A auctions. You know, the bigger audiences come to see those auctions. You might just get, and that's true too. And that show is when, when is that show? Smack in the middle of the summer. So, you know, it, it just from my There's an exception to every rule. There that's is. you know that's true, but you know that those are from just my shop experience. I know when we're busy and when we're not. So, so Jeff, thanks for for writing into us at CoinShowRadio dot com. Uh, send us your questions if you'd like to be like Jeff and uh, like Eric. You know, write to us questions at CoinShowRadio dot com. Maybe we'll answer them on the next show. You know, Matt, uh, it is time for another book review. And All right. I, I want to tell you that this is one of the few I've ever done that is actually of a new book, uh-huh. first edition. Okay. Um, the book that I wanted to recommend is uh, called Morgan Dollar, America's Love Affair with a Legendary Coin by Michael Miles Standish. Mm-hmm. Now, for years, the Morgan Dollar has been a favorite of American coin collectors. Generation after generation have collected these large silver coins for varying reasons. You know, many enjoy the history and the imagery of the Wild West, where some of these coins were used in circulation. Some have collected them because of their worth above their face value. And yet others have been compelled by the availability of 100-plus-year-old coins that still exist in pristine condition. And not to mention the design on some of these coins is pretty intriguing as well, especially the Morgan. I mean, that's, that's the one that tends to catch people's eye. Yes. People really do seem to like it. Now the release of the GSA hordes in the 1960s changed the world of Morgan dollars and the availability of certain date and mint mark combinations to the public. And yet even the release of thousands of coins thought to be lost forever. Didn't quench the collecting world's appetite for these large cartwheels. While most series of American coinage will suffice with a single reference, it seems that Morgan dollars have compelled more writers than any other. You know, Q. David Bowers has written more than one covering the Morgan series. And yet our hunger to know more about them continues to go unsatisfied. Michael Miles Standish. Michael Miles Standish has recently released a new Morgan Dollar reference, one that I feel is worthy of your consideration and would be an excellent addition to your numismatic library. Morgan Dollar, America's Love with a America's Love Affair with a Legendary Coin, is a brilliant book that explores these legendary coins and features the Coronet Collection, ranked number one by PCGS as the finest Morgan Dollar set of all time to illustrate examples of each coin by date and mint mark. Wow. Yeah. Standish, vice president and senior grader at PCGS, describes the rich history of America during the Morgan Dollar era and faithfully describes the symbolism utilized in the obverse and reverse designs. He also breaks the series down for his readers year by year and mint by mint. You know, included are certified populations and retail prices in multiple grades. He describes general strike characteristics and rarity for each coin as well. Also included is an entire chapter devoted to the proof coinage uh, by date or 
devoted to the proof coinage date by date describing the strikes one will encounter in surviving examples from each year. Mm, that's cool. Yeah. Standish has endeavored to bring readers the finest reference on Morgan Dollars available today. His concise writing style is easy to read and packed with useful information. His historical accounts and use of current population data illuminate the romance and wide appeal of these coins, making sense of the rarity and desirability of each issue. Now, unlike many other Morgan references, illustrations are a true highlight of this book, utilizing absolutely stunning photography of the Coronet collection. You know, collectors can see with their own eyes what should be strived for in each and every coin. In my opinion, Standish has hit the nail squarely on the head with this book. He has redefined the Morgan Dollar reference and created what is to date the ultimate volume on this series. Wow, you must like this book. I do. <laughs> this is a book that will be valued by Morgan Dollar enthusiasts at all levels of interest. So it's like beginners and people that have been collecting them for years will enjoy this this book alike. A treat for both your eyes and your mind that will be studied and enjoyed for years to come. Available from Whitman Publishing for twenty nine ninety five U.S., Morgan Dollar, America's Love Affair with a Legendary Coin, is tuition for your numismatic education that is well worth the investment. I like it. I'm going to have that. You sold me. I'm getting one. Well, Matt. Yes, sir. Getting ready to close up another episode of the Coin Show. Yeah. And we can't do that without a discussion of the coolest thing that walked into your shop this week. Oh, man. This was a really, really, really hard week to pick. We've had some really cool stuff come in. Um, I mean, we we bought, uh, and I know it's the coin show, but I'm going to talk currency for 10 seconds. Uh, we bought a national note that was previously unknown until we found it. Wow. Yep. Um, we bought just, I mean, just piles of really cool type coins. We bought some proofs this week. Um, but there was one coin that was kind of head and shoulders above the rest. And this is an uber rare, uh, American rarity, uh, you know, an enhanced uncirculated Sacagawea dollar? No, 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 <laughs> no. I will. Uh, you're you're, you're going to shy though. You're, you're, you're going to be surprised uh, at what walked in. Uh, this particular coin, I, I'm going to see if you can guess it. This particular coin has an overall mintage of 934 pieces. 934 pieces for Four circulation. Pieces. Oh, okay, because I was going to say that means it's a proof coin. No. Okay, so it's 934 pieces for circulation. For it's circulation. not a pattern. It's not a pattern. Uh, which means it comes from the 19th century. No. Ooh. So this is a 20th century coin. No. Oh, this is 1700s. Mm-hmm. Well, that's all there was left, because I know the coolest thing is never 21st century. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> yes, because we know. Anyways, <laughs> we'll, we'll bang into that one later. The, the, the coolest thing to walk in the shop this week... Uh, was a 1796 half dollar um, in NGC fine details. Now, the coin was a details coin. Um, it had actually been, the hair had been retooled um, to show more detail than it had, which, you know, in the 1850s and 60s was actually acceptable. Um, but Still, there there are two varieties of 1796 halves. There's a 15-star and a 16-star half. Um, the estimated total mintage for the 1796 half, both types, is 934 coins. Uh, the 15-star, which is what we bought, uh, has an estimated mintage of just 569 coins. Uh, 
Now let me let me stop and explain for just a second that you know in the in the fledgling days of the United States, not just the United States Mint, but the United States, you know, we knew that that our country was going to expand and that our country was going to add, you know, along the line. And so what had ended up happening was uh, when we added the states of Tennessee and or Vermont and Tennessee. We added two stars and two stripes to our flag. And we also added stars to our coinage. And we kind of figured out over the course of those couple of years that this was going to be a relatively cumbersome thing. Yes. And that it probably wasn't a practical pursuit. And so they kind of went back to the to the Mason standard of 13 and keeping in the originality of that. And so our coins went back to 13 stars and our, our flag went back to 13 stripes, but we decided to reflect all of the different states in our flag. Yep. And, and I think, I believe the, the, but the 15 to 16 was Tennessee, which is the state that in 1796, they, they went on to add that other star. Mm-hmm. Um, so this coin, I mean, these coins do not come up for sale. They're the last one, um, in this per, kind of this grade range, sold in 2011. So I mean, it's been three years since one's even sold at auction. Uh, in this grade range, now this uh, one's got a heraldic eagle on the back, right? No, no, it has a small eagle. It's a this small, eagle, small eagle. Okay, yep. that's why it's so rare. Wow, um, it's got the drape bust obverse and then the small eagle reverse. Um, and the coin is just I could not I could not believe when it walked in the door. Um, you know, the, the guy that brought it in didn't even call. <laughs> I love that. That's one of my favorite things is when somebody brings in something that's just uber rare and, you know, don't, don't even call. So, and, and as you have told me before that it's like this stuff is all over the United States. I mean, yeah. it's not like it's concentrated in any major city. So when one just kind of walks in out of the middle of Indiana, it's like, yeah, I guess that makes sense. It you happens. Know? But it just this is the first time one of these has ever walked into my store. Um. So it's already been graded. It's already been certified, yep. It's been certified, and it's a details coin. Mm-hmm. Um, what are your plans for this? Is it's it already going gone. To, it's already gone. It's already gone. This is the kind of coin that there are people just waiting to buy. Um, you know, and this is a five-figure coin. I mean, this is not child's play type stuff. This is a coin that, you know, somebody walks in the shop with a five-figure coin is not normal. So, yeah, this is this is a let me grab it, let me turn it, let me make my money and get out of it. Pretty much, yeah. I mean, uh, we made a little bit. We didn't make a lot, uh, you know, percentage wise. But you know, I it, it I got to own it. That's why uh, you're in business. Yep, I got to keep my lights on. I got to pay my employees. Um, and so it was cool to have it come in, but it was also pretty cool to get rid of it. <laughs> and we can expect to see pictures of this on... Oh, I have some really great pictures. Coinshowradio.com. Yep, I will make sure to post them. Well, Got some brand new fresh. I just, I just sit here and tap hands. my toes. That's awesome. I love it. Uh, and, those guys and rock. We love those guys. Do rock, and we love them for loving us. You know, you I, big I, nerd. Yeah, God, we like it though. We would like to thank our contributors, the Facebook friends, Twitter followers, people who follow our blogs, people who wrote to ask questions, like Eric and Mister Mendenhall. Um. Or, or people who have in some other way inspired us. Our thanks to the great folks at the ANA, the American Numismatic Association, for their support. Visit them at money.org. Our thanks to Tony Alvarez and the Tony Alvarez Band for our theme music. Visit them at TonyAlvarezBand.com. We'd also like to thank the Coffin Cats for their musical contributions. God, you guys make us thump. Uh, visit them at CoffinCatsRock.com. We'd also like to thank May for her help. And a big thanks to our intern and research assistant, Sam Schaefer. And Sam while those the man. Peop- Sam the man. Sam the man. And the pharaoh. And while those people are important to contributors to this show, their importance absolutely pales in comparison to you, the listeners, without whom this entire endeavor would be completely pointless. 
We love our audience almost, well, no, actually, we love our audience just as much as we love the Coffee Cats. And we love our audience contributions even more. Send us your thoughts. Email us at Mike or Matt at CoinShowRadio.com. Or you can also ask us questions. Send a question to questions at CoinShowRadio.com. Visit our brand new webpage, conveniently located at CoinShowRadio.com. There you will find all kinds of new things to explore and enjoy. Report what you think back to us. We always welcome your feedback on the new site and what you'd like to see us do there as well as any other feedback about the show. Tell Matt he's wrong about these enhanced uncirculated dollars. No, you guys know I'm right. It's okay. Check out Matt's new gallery of the cool stuff that walks into Matt's shop on CoinShowRadio.com. Feel free to stop by and give him some feedback. We have a comment section uh, in all kinds of areas of our of our website. Please, you know. And you don't uh, have to sign up. Just leave a comment. Nope. And the pictures are absolutely spectacular. You know, one of the one of the features that I really do love about our new website is that when you click on these pictures, they take up almost your entire screen. Oh, I t- yeah. The one thing I, it, I do like to do is take pictures. They are awesome. Like our page on Facebook, as over 4,000 people have done so far. Come and comment on one of our posts or post something of your own. Try and keep it coin-related. You can find us either by searching The Coin Show or Coin Show Radio. Follow us on Twitter. You will occasionally find some exclusive content there as well. You can find us or even mention us in your discussion. We are at The Coin Show. We have an Instagram page as well. We're building it every day. We can be found there as The Coin Show. You can listen to our show on Spreaker.com. Just go to www.spreaker.com and search Coin Show Radio. You can also listen on Spreaker.com on money.org. Yes. Or you can find our show on players at various internet sites such as Cointalk.com. If you'd like to host a player on your website, just email me, Mike, at CoinShowRadio.com for details. Stop emailing me about the $15 million you want me to help import into the country. (laughs) We have a Windows 8 app, and it's available in the Windows 8 app phone store. Download it several hundred times. We could use the bucks. Or if you have an Android phone, we have one for you as well. Download it on Amazon.com for only $1.99. Both are absolute bargains for your entertainment dollar. And as always, our show is available for free on iTunes. You can download full versions of the show there. We urge you to do so and share it with your friends. More people continue to find us every single day and wonder why they've never listened before. Be the first among your friends to find The Coin Show and share it with them. You will look smarter because you found this awesome show first. So for The Coin Show, I'm Mike. And I'm Matt. And we'll talk to you next time on The Coin Show. That internet internet edge. Uh, uh, we want to put a bow on this anyway. Uh. Yeah.